Hello, this is John Buck again, uh, here to record another video for you. And uh, for tonight's topic, what we're going to be talking about is the stability in discrete time systems. And particularly, uh, this is sort of revisiting stability. I already have one video on that, but based on dealing with some questions in office hours in the class, I think we can do a little better job of explaining it and giving you some hints on how to get started in solving stability problems. So again, the basic idea for stability is that bounded inputs lead to bounded outputs, which is to say that mathematically, we say that if the magnitude of x of n is less than or equal to some constant b, we can find a, some constant c in terms of b, so that the magnitude of the output y of n is always less than that c. So if we maybe take that a little more graphically, if we think of here's my system down here. So I've got x of n going in and y of n coming out. What we're saying is, is that if I've got a signal x of n as the input, so maybe it's not really a discrete time signal the way I've drawn it, but we can pretend. And the only thing you really know about it is that its amplitude is always between plus or minus b. So there's some upper and lower limit on the amplitude. If it's a stable system, just knowing this limits on the amplitude is enough to find, of the limits on the amplitude of the input is enough to find limits on the amplitude of the output. So that it might be a different limit, it might be up here or smaller, but I can find some value c where for any input that's between plus and minus b, the output is guaranteed to be between plus and minus c, no matter what it is. So again, I'm talking about upper limits on amplitude here. Sort of equivalently, if I want to, uh, or, or on the other side, if I want to talk about things that are unstable, if a system is unstable, which is not a good thing in general, this means that we can, we can find, to show a system's unstable, we can find a limited or bounded x of n. Right, so we can find some input that's always between plus or minus b that makes the absolute value of the output, the magnitude of the output, blow up, go to infinity. So there's... A, if a system's unstable, there must be some bounded input that makes it blow up. So that seems pretty simple in practice, but a lot of people find problems proving these different. It's not always as easy to break it down step by step like we've talked about with linearity and time invariance. So let's see uh, some examples and maybe give you a few hints on how to move forward. I think part of it is what makes these different is they involve working a lot with inequalities. So for here, Let's look at a case. Suppose y of n is x squared of n minus 3 minus 4x of n minus 5. Right, so that's my system equation. A really good place to start with this is to say, remember, I'm trying to find things out about how the magnitude of y of n relates to the magnitude of x of n. So let's get some magnitudes into the equation as a good first start. And so usually whenever I'm working on a stability problem, if I'm not sure if it's stable or not, I'll, I'll try to prove it's stable to start with if I don't have a good guess. And so I'll take the magnitude of both sides. If these two things are equal, their magnitudes must be equal too. And I'm going to, sort of looking ahead a little bit, I'm going to rewrite x of n minus 3 squared like this. Because we're going to need that in a second. Okay, and now this is where the, the properties with inequalities come in. And a couple of useful things that using inequality that are worth reviewing uh, that get you a long way in, in many of these problems, which the first is that if I add or subtract two numbers and then take their magnitude, that is always less than or equal to taking the magnitudes and add them. And this isn't a typo. Even if there's a subtraction here, it's still bounded by the sum of the magnitudes over here. Another one 
is that if I have a product of two numbers and I take the magnitude, that that's equal to the magnitude of the products. And the third one that comes up sometimes is the reciprocal, which is to say if magnitude of A is less than magnitude of B, then when I flip things around, that tells me the magnitude of 1 over A, or I guess I could make this equal, has to go the other way. Right? When I take the reciprocal of two things, take the reciprocal of both sides, then they have to go the other way. So this is sort of, I maybe should have set this apart on its own page, but this is sort of some handy review facts or essential facts that come in and working with magnitudes. There are others too. You need to, to use all of your sort of mathematical skills and fluency, but this is a, a you know these will get you a long way in a lot of problems. So bringing that back to what I have here, if, if I come back up here, let me get my uh, my little laser pointer, and say, well, this is this is looking like a difference of two terms. So I could apply this this thing here, right? So if I do that. This tells me continuing my, my path. Again, I'm, I'm trying, oops, wrong, wrong color, sorry. I'm trying to get things for y of n. My big picture goal is to get things for the magnitude of y of n in terms of the magnitude of x of n. So this tells me if y of n is equal to that, and I have this here, then this is less than or equal to the magnitude of x of n minus 3 squared, taking the magnitude of that. And again, this is the tricky thing, the magnitude of 4 x of n minus 5. And again, tricky because even though this is minus, the magnitude of a difference is less than the sum of the magnitudes of the things. Don't get, get fooled by that. Sometimes people get mixed up when they're just starting out with that. And so now this squared is a product, so I can use this thing here. I can say, well, this is now equal to the magnitude of x of n minus 3 squared. And this is also a product here, so I can pull the 4 outside. And now we've gotten most of where we need to be, because we can say, well, I've gotten, I can say the magnitude of y of n is less than or equal to this thing, which is equal to that thing. I guess let me back that up a little bit for a second. The magnitude of y of n is equal to this thing, which is less than this thing, which is equal to that thing. And now we're going to say, well, if this is where we get to our bounded in inequality, if there is a limit on the input amplitude, so if the magnitude of x of n is less than or equal to some constant b, then I can put that in here and say, well, this thing will be less than b squared. Right? And this will be less than or equal to 4b. And it's worth pointing out, the time shifts in here don't really matter. Right? If I take a time signal and I delay it by 3 or delay it by 5, if it's less than b everywhere, it's still going to be less than b. Right? And just to sort of think, time I'm moving left and right, <clears throat> let me go back to my previous page where I sort of had my sketch of a signal. Right? If this thing is all inside plus or minus b here, if I'm always inside plus or minus b here, and then I delay it by 3 or delay it by 5, I'm still always inside plus or minus b. So that hasn't changed anything there. And so I can, can put all this together here and get this, this bottom line that says, says if y of n is less, if x of n is less than or equal to b, then I can say then the magnitude of y of n is less than or equal to b squared plus 4b. So just sort of scroll down the page a bit here. That tells me I can choose, this is, this is my new constant, this is my C. I can say if my input is bounded by B, my output will always be bounded by B squared plus 4B. So if I really want to finish this off, I can say so choose, I've, I've found the constant I need. So I'm choosing C to be by squared, B squared plus 4B, and then I've, I've satisfied the rules for stability. So this tells me the system is stable. Right? That's a happy thing. Right? Why is that a happy thing? Just to, to sort of review is, well, when we're talking about these systems, that these signals can represent anything. They can represent a voltage. They can represent a temperature. 
that can represent a pressure, I don't want to have a system where a normal balanced bounded input, an input with limits on an amplitude, can make its output some pressure or temperature go to infinity. That's bad. Things catch fire, things explode, things break. Or even if they're, if they're just audio systems, it's not as dramatic as that. But things get clipped, they sound awful, maybe they actually damage your speakers. So those are all bad things. And so again, that that's a, a quick example. And, and I'll break this out in a separate video. I'll do an example of things, uh, what it looks like when the system is not stable. So you get some contrast here. Okay, thank you. Have a good night.